people. We have had an interesting week with our with our wildlife around Singapore. We have indeed two major incidents, one involving an otter, one involving a kalogu, and there's only two people we need to talk to about it. Let's bring him on now. Um, Kalai Vanan, the co-CEO of Acres, and the other man, the super lecturer at NU West. Welcome, gentlemen. Glad to have you on the show today to talk to us about our our nature. Morning, Glenn, Neil, and Siva. Good to Great. see you again. Great to morning, have guys. you. Good morning. Uh, Siva, let's start with the otter, because that was the one that went um, that happened a little bit earlier in the week. Uh, Time-wise, a, a jogger was bitten. Apparently, he was a little too close looking at the otter, and he was bitten on the ankle. Tell us, uh, tell us about where we're at with that right now, based on, on what you know. Uh, so far, uh, incidents where otters have uh, bitten people, it's usually when they have pups. So when they have pups, uh, they are a little less tolerant about you getting too close to them. Mm. So uh, this individual was curious because he saw uh, the Bishan family. It's a large group. He was jogging and then he decided to follow them, uh, got too close. And what they will do is they will nip you. So they will turn around and nip you. And that's like a warning. Mm -hmm. um, then, of course, most people will, will back off. So there are many instances in which uh, auto watchers have been present and they've warned people uh, but they persist in getting closer because I think the image of the authors is you know they're very cute and lovable so <laughs> yeah. surely nothing will happen and uh, tragically the principle of keeping a distance uh, fails at that point the handphones don't help because the zoom isn't great so people look at the handphone and go too close mm. trying to get that uh, lovely shot <laughs> And Kala, if I can follow up with you, um, one of the interesting things I thought happened as a consequence, two things. One, I give full credit to the jogger who, you know, lost a bit of face by saying publicly, hey, guys, this was my fault. Yeah. I went too mm -hmm. close. I shouldn't. I thought that was a really, really positive message to send out there. And two, generally, just based on some of the comments I read on the social media platforms, people seem to be taking a more how can we say this, otter-friendly response saying, yeah, you know what, we know what we have to do now. We have to stay further away. So do you see that cutting through, Kalai, that this positive message about wildlife and how people must behave? I think in the last 10 years, uh, we have made some grounds and improvements in how uh, people view wildlife. So I think a lot of people are coming, uh, coming into agreement that, you know, it's inevitable that you will cite wildlife and that you cannot choose what wildlife you want to be uh, interacting or seeing out there in public. So mm. I think people are uh, learning more about what to do and what not to do. And I think that's the whole point, uh, at least for Acres, you know, we do a lot of educational work on what people should and shouldn't do. So it's slowly uh, getting ingrained into people's minds. Um, but this is still different as opposed to, you know, when we have incidences of otters uh, uh, going into people's ponds and unfortunately hunting fish. Uh, I think there's a lot of still negativity there, but uh, in this case, it is just pretty obvious there that the guy went too close, and I think the members of public uh, kind of agree with that. Uh, yeah, I mean, any number of times I've been on East Coast, uh, uh, East Coast Park uh, near Marina Barrage, and there have been, oh, it looks like we lost Siva. Uh, there have been, uh, you know, the, the otter families right alongside on the, on the ground, and people are literally a meter away yeah. taking pictures so yeah. um, I was going to ask Siva if he felt like that message that we've been talking about with him on this show for years now is finally uh, sinking in but hopefully we'll get him back on Facebook live looks like he may might have just but, lost his but Kala, if I could just ask you when I saw the footage um, of those otters I, I think it was the Bishan family correct me if I'm wrong but it was it was certainly the what seems to be the biggest family. And even I, a seasoned otter watcher, I see them almost every day around Lorong Halus and, and so on. I was my first reaction was, wow, that family is big now. It was twenty yeah. plus. And even as a video, I thought it was slightly intimidating. Are we going to you know what I'm going to say, Kalai? As the family gets bigger, are people going to get slightly more fearful and are we going to see slightly more negative responses? Okay, when I first saw the video, I myself was surprised. I, I thought it was two separate families or something like that, but it turns yeah. out, yeah, so the family is doing very well. Uh, but one thing we need to keep in mind that actually different families, uh, they, they behave differently. Um, so I think 
like the families you see around the central business district, they are more used to people, and that is why people mm. have become accustomed to even going near. If you mm. go and see the Otter families in the northeast part of Singapore or even at Sungai Buloh area, they are very shy of people. You cannot even get anywhere mm. near them. So the different families uh, have different exposure to people and their behavior is different. Yeah. And uh, regards to this big family, um, just yesterday there was a fight between the families and I think there's already been some casualties where the authors have sustained some injuries. And through this process, uh, the numbers will just adjust accordingly. Uh, not all of them will survive. When the families fight, they will go for the pups first if they can, but the pups sure. will be the small, uh, smallest. So that is a way of how the author families keep, you know, the carrying capacity at check. Right? Yeah. It's literally natural selection at work. Yes, I mean, we're watching yeah, Darwinism yeah. happen. They will take care of themselves. Yep. We're talking yeah. with Kalevana and the co-CEO of Acres, uh, which, as you probably know, is that organization that uh, responds when animals are in danger or need some sort of help. And, and Kala, you became a bit of a media star this week uh, yourself uh, when you responded to uh, help with a Kologu, uh, that uh, appeared in Tanglin Halt uh, in the HDB estate there. First of all, tell us what a Kologu is, and, and then take us through what happened with your story, because you, you led an impromptu learning session with a bunch of kids that was covered in the media, uh, and, and you really did an amazing thing. Okay, so uh, the Malayan Kologu, yeah, it's an unusual animal. Uh, I think a lot of people are still unaware that uh, we have such wildlife in Singapore. Yeah, I was, not, I, I was unaware of it until I've I saw them. I've seen yeah, them in Singapore. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, sorry, carry on. They are nocturnal, so you'll see them mostly at night, and they can be found in certain areas. Like if you go to Bukit Batok uh, Nature Park, you can, you can see them if you know where to find them. So this particular animal, it can glide, it cannot fly. Uh, it has a patagium, so it's able to open its wings and kind of glide. I think it can glide about 70 to 100 meters from very high uh, treetops. Wow. So this particular individual for reasons unknown was found smack in the middle of a HDB estate and mm. uh, you know they don't do well with stress uh, they obviously don't like to be near to people uh, nowhere anything like authors so they, they are very elusive high up in the tree so this individual was stuck in a HDB estate where we knew that there's no way for him to get out and he could get stranded and when they get stranded they are very vulnerable yeah. so we had to rescue the, uh, the sorry the Kologu and relocate it as for the Raising awareness and educational uh, part of it, uh, that is something that all of us at Acres, we are trained to do. And uh, mm. even that rescue uh, was done as a team. As, it was me and my colleague Adrian, actually, we, we did it together. So uh, that is something we always focus on because it's not just about rescuing the animal. We want to leave uh, the location knowing that we have imparted our knowledge to people on what the animal is and what to do next time. And what not yeah. to do. So that was a beautiful yeah. story. It, it really was, Kalai. Yeah. And I have to say, I think you're being far too modest, as you always are. I can put my hand up, and I may get emotional here, but it, it is relevant. Glenn and I attended a talk this week about the situation in Ukraine. I was feeling a bit down. I came home, and I just happened to see your story and the photographs of you standing at the Tanglin Hort housing estate. And I'm just painting a picture for our listeners. All the children were sitting there. On the ground in front of you. You know, legs folded <laughs> in what turned out to be a literal outdoor classroom <laughs> in Tanglin Hall. I just thought it was wonderful, Kalai. I mean, is this a one-off or is this something that you occasionally do around the housing estates? Um, this is something that all of us at Acres, we will do whenever we get the chance. Uh, even when we are rescuing snakes like pythons and cobras, uh, we will try to gather people if possible and tell them yeah. why the snake is there, what snake it is. Uh, in this case, there were a lot of kids and they were all very interested in this rather unusual animal that they have never seen before. Mm. So, What, uh, what kinds of questions were the kids asking? Can it fly? Is it poisonous? Uh, what does it eat? Uh, stuff like that. But they're just curious mm. to see the animal up close. Uh, but we had to remind them that this, this particular, you know, this kolugu gets stressed very easily. So the mm. first objective is to rescue the kolugu. And then we do it step by step. And then we showed it to them. This is what the kolugu is, what it does and all that. And then we, yeah, that, that's how we approach the whole situation. And uh, not surprising, we've got comments coming in. Uh... An Barasi Bupal says, uh, well said, Neil, heartwarming outreach yeah. from your good self, Kalai. But I have an interesting question. I was going to throw it to Siva, but uh, I'll ask yourself. Uh, Stanley asks, good question. More importantly, is it dangerous to be nipped or bitten by an otter? What should one do 
to help if such a situation happens again. So two things, is it dangerous to be bitten by an otter and what should you do in those situations? Um, I will say it's risky or maybe dangerous to be bitten by any wild animal in, in general. It's not just otters. Um, but I think the tricky thing with otters is if an otter bites you, it's probably because it feels threatened. Uh, it's not trying to eat you. They, 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 they're not interested in people. It's out of defense. And the problem with that is if one otter bites you, chances are there are going to be many otters around. So there is a possibility that they may surround you. So I think that's where it's very important not to go too near them. Now, if you get nipped or if you get bitten, you've got to see how bad the injuries are. Um, or, or you, sh you should get medical help. You know, if it's a deep puncture, probably need stitches and all that. Um, but yeah, you know, if you get nipped, it's a clear sign to move away immediately. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. get carried away with their cameras going too near uh, mm. or, you know, trying to show children their, their, how, how close they can get to authors. So I think we should avoid that. Absolutely. And, you know, unfortunately, we, we lost uh, N.C. Vasotti, our good friend. Um, his comms went down. looks like we're trying to get him back now, but he did, he did respond on uh, Facebook Live saying, we are all proud of Kalai and Acres for how he pivoted it to educate the kids and the rescue site. And... Um, Siva, are you back? Like our otters, you can't keep a good otter man down. <laughs> Welcome back. We missed you. Kalai's <laughs> doing fine. All right, Siva, just give us a few updates. So maybe you could give us a bit more detail, a few things there. One, give us an update on that uh, incident at Alexandra Canal. And also maybe for our readers, listeners' benefit, what you know, how serious it is if you get nipped by an otter. You're someone who's been working with otters for many, many years now. Well, um, I think wildlife workers uh, will probably say they've not gotten bitten. Uh, rescue workers might. Uh, this is for any animal. Uh, and the gentleman who was nipped, you know, uh, during his job, uh, excellent. He washed his wound and made his way to uh, Raffles Hospital. Uh, that's a solid chat. So uh, bites, like Kalai say, uh, just treat like any other uh, kind of bites. Uh, do get it checked out. Uh, by uh, GP or go to the hospital. For, for this issue of Alexandra where an uh, otter is injured, right, and it's screaming. And that's happening right now, correct? Yeah, that's right. So uh, that's a tragic outcome when uh, otters are crowded. So people ask, oh, will anything stop the otter population from, uh, you know, exploding? So for top predators, they guard their space uh, very carefully because if another family comes in, there's less fish for them. So they are protective and we've seen fights over the years as the territorial boundaries become crowded. Uh, Bishan is a dominant uh, family. So in these fights, they will persist. The weaker family will persist. Sometimes we've even seen the weaker family take the fight to the stronger family. So mm. this is an attempt to establish territory. But uh, tragically, it's usually the weakest member of a family that gets injured. So these are pups, and we've seen uh, many pups get killed. And usually that's the climax of, of the battle. The family whose pup has been killed will withdraw from the area. Now, um, they don't always get killed. Sometimes they have severe injuries. And when members of public uh, alert us to this, uh, if Acres goes down and they need to send, you know, they realize it's severely injured. They have to send it to um, Mandai Nature, the, you know, the Singapore Zoo, where the vets will uh, assess the injuries. Now, this typically requires uh, an x-ray, so the animal will be sedated, and then there will be a quick call between members of the auto working group as to how to treat the situation. You mm -hmm. can't, we don't have the ability to rehabilitate, which takes a very long time, a uh, social animal separated from its family will be screaming nonstop. Um, we've, we, we go through all the options which we already are prepared for, but every case we evaluate. And in many instances, we have to uh, put the animal down so it gets euthanized by the, by the vet. And, you know, people are extremely angry with us, but it's not a casual decision. I understand. Siva, just briefly... If there is a dominant family, and if I'm wrong, please tell me, it appears to be the Bishan family, and as I was saying to Kalai, the, the numbers have swollen. Is there a possibility, I'm just asking the question so you can 
let us know, let the public know that the dominant family will just keep growing and growing as it is at the apex of the otter world, so to speak. Uh, so, you know, in the, the daily uh, ritual of a uh, otter family is to go out and catch fish and feed. Now, if you're in a small group uh, and the waterway, our waterways are full of fish, then that's a very comfortable situation. I think otter watchers recall from many years ago, you could go out, watch the otters feed, and then they go back and sleep and you can go to a coffee shop and have breakfast. Uh, now that's not possible because they have to keep feeding. So it's a longer time that they have to spend out there. There's competition between individuals to get food. So there, there's a natural limit to uh, how big a family can grow depending on the amount of fish in waterways. Right. All right, gentlemen, uh, we do have to leave uh, the discussion there for right now, but do want to thank N. Siva Soti, the senior lecturer at NUS, and Kalai Vanan, the co-CEO of Acres. It's been a big week uh, this week in Singapore with our wildlife. As always, please, folks, do not get too close to our wild animals. If you see a problem or uh, an injured animal, call Acres. Uh, they will respond. And in the meantime, thanks to both of you for coming on today. Thank you, thank you guys. Thanks, guys.